having a good day. Well, you're still going to have a good day because you're going to figure this out once and for all. Because we have real serious chair issues, you and I. Well, you know what they did is they gave everybody too many levers. Right. The middle one. What? The middle one. That thing way back there? No, don't listen to him. He's stupid. Okay. All right. I can't listen to Take the one that makes you go all the way up and down and pull it and go all the way down. All right. Whoa. Okay, now stay in it. All right, and stay. adjust the angle so you're eagle, e- so you're one. comfortable. Than the one that wasn't that one. That's right. Listen there, to Danny. There's I'm three of them, dumbass. Go forward. Dumbass. Pull that one. All right, go to one. the middle one. Nothing. Well, I thought we were gonna talk her through this too. I thought we were gonna talk All her right. down, man. Because you have to be in it. Yeah, the middle one. No, yeah, it's the middle one. And you it's, up and down. it's the middle one. Oh, my God. Hi, you guys. How are you? <laughs> it's Thursday. Welcome Thursday. I was having a good day. Wait, wait. You come here and help. You know technically. The middle one. I it's the middle one. It's the, that no, one you have to one. literally lean that against the middle one. Oh, my God. They're different. See, that no, they're is not. the middle one. Oh, no. That chair over there only has two. One's broken off. Hi, how are you guys? Anyway, welcome to Thursday. I'll be your host, Jay. But why did Daddy no, Bonucci? There's the front one. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's right. You're just not doing it with the force. It's the middle one. <sighs> I was really having a great day because I have good news. You have good news? Mm-hmm. Well, your chair. Yeah. know. Is it back a little? No, I, it's just showing. I think it's better. And then you can just adjust the height. Thank you. All right. Better? Uh, yes. Yeah, better. The front one. <laughs> okay. On that chair. <laughs> the front one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have a front butt. Hey. Not you. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, that's the way I talk to girls. That's yeah, the middle one. That's how I woo them. <laughs> you weren't supposed to Hey, lady, nice front butt. <laughs> nice front butt. Ooh, you single? All right. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. All right. Anyway, I have good news. What is it? Well, you know when I went on my sabbatical? Yeah. And I had uh, a six-date guy? Yeah. And um, I went on six dates. One, my girlfriends were a little iffy about because it was two dates in one day. And they're no, like... I'm good with you if you change clothes, remember? Oh, yeah. Your girlfriends right. are wrong. Right, because I changed clothes. So, anyway... um. I found out he's 26, so I'm not creepy. Oh, very nice. Yay! Yeah. Well, and you thought he was 24. Yeah. yeah. Well, Skippy told me he was 24. And so then last night I was on the phone with him. I go, I have to ask you something. And he goes, let me guess. You want to know how old I am? <gasps> I go, how would you know I was going to ask that? He goes, because I just had this feeling you were wondering. Huh? He goes, I'm 26. I go, oh, okay. I feel not as creepy. It's yeah. not creepy anymore no. either. It's like below the 10 year mark. Right. Yeah. yeah. All righty then. So that's good. That's good. This might be a potential. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. That's awesome. And What's he was, do? Uh, he is a manager and not at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> what does he manage? He's a regional manager of stuff. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So he's got a big boy job and everything. Yeah, I'd like it if I, if you dated a guy in a profession that someday I could suck knowledge off. Uh, this one you might have some knowledge. I mean, you could get some knowledge yeah. from. So, yeah, he has a big boy job and he has a big boy car and a big boy house. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So he's a big boy. He's a big boy. 26. <laughs> 26 is a big boy. No, I'm cool with 26. Okay, good. All right, yeah, me too. I feel a lot better about that because I, uh, I was driving home feeling a little creepy. Yeah? I was... Verging on creepy with 24, but I was still okay. It was 23 made it creepy. I don't know why. Yeah, right. Well, I think even 24, I felt a little creepy. I felt a, I, I felt violated. <laughs> no, he felt violated. Well, that's what makes it creepy. <laughs> Actually, may I tell you something? That is something that's so weird, that fine line, because, you know, when you're with somebody and they're not sure what they're doing, you're like, okay, cool, they haven't had a lot of partners. But then when you're with somebody that's young and knows exactly where to go and what they're doing, you're like... Hey. Hey. <laughs> and then one other sad part about him. Yeah. Well, first of all, he went to Kentucky and he played football on a scholarship. And oh, then, okay. I thought just with Hicks. No. And then um, he he did something and then he ended up not finishing there because of whatever, uh, because he tore something. So okay. he didn't finish his scholarship. So he ended up going, of all places, to Southern Illinois University for his last year. How cool is that? That's where I'm from. Right. I mean, what are the chances? What are the odds? That I meet somebody that went to SIU, correct? Right. The so, second one. Who was the first one? Didn't the doctor go to SIU for a year? God, no. Oh. <laughs> They're not really known for their doesn't medical. He fight, doesn't he play a fight song from SIU? Michigan State, oh, and okay. he went to Wayne State. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so no, so th- it was pretty cool. So I decided to play Remember When, you know? So we were talking about different places, Gatsby's, and all these different places that are in Southern Illinois. 
And I said, oh, remember how great it was after you went um, out to, to drinking? You went to Mama C's Pizza. He said, Mama C's, where is that? I go right at whatever, you know, right where the railroad tracks hit, Mama C's. And he right. goes, you know, you know what he said? Yeah, I do. Hmm. Mama C's turned into Papa John's. Yep. I said, Mama C's turned into Papa John's. Do you know that when I went to college there, there was no such thing as a Papa John's? <laughs> Don't, there, was, you know what? there was a pizza in. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> there was no such thing as a Papa John's the other day. It's I not know. like saying, hey, uh, my favorite album is Revolver from the Beatles and having him say who. Right. There was no Papa John's like in our age grade or even Jack going down to Jack there yesterday. I know. So that even made me feel worse that he knows it as Papa John's. Right. I know Papa John's is a couple years ago. He knows it from college. Okay, I didn't help you on that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it now. I was just going to say it could have changed to Papa John's the other day. I mean, the Donna Summer thing with Builder Bob was right. bad enough, but now this kid it was in, at the university when there was a Papa John's. And I knew it when it was a Mama C's. Which was better? In where? Well, you've had one here <laughs> and one there. What do you mean? I, I have questions. Oh, Mama C's or Papa John's? Yeah. Mm, I like Papa John's. I hate to admit it. Yeah. Papa John's is a pretty good Papa pie. Papa John's is pretty damn good. Good yeah. delivery pizza, not right. like, you know, the gourmet pizzas right. that you can get somewhere else. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, like yours at Fiori's. Fiorini. Fiorini. Thank you, Jamie. Fiorini. Yeah, yeah. Studio City, thank what? you, Jamie. What? Papa John's is like seven or eight years old. You know, you're just mean. I'm trying no. to be cool. No, Papa John's is old, and, and it's founded by the guy that originally, uh, one of the founders of Pizza Hut, and then he sold it off, and then he came back as Papa John's. I thought it was Domino's. It's, it's Pizza Hut guy? Yes. How come you know the trivia of Papa John's? it's food. <laughs> it's food. It was a big story, too, in, the, in business. So seven or eight years ago, so he's in yeah. college. You're right? all good. You, you don't need to explain it all at a 26-year-old. Okay, so that was good, and everything's good. And yeah. Okay, and you're now... Good. Because I know, it, and it started out of it. It just worked its way to uh, the West Coast, really, California in the last few years. Okay, it I feel seems. good. And yeah. he has a big boy job, big boy car, and a big boy house. Oh yeah, you're okay. Okay, good. Good. Okay, okay bye. Wow, Stinch was nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so it is Thursday. Is it the first day? No, it's the 29th. I know Jack on whatever day, Sunday, right? Yeah. All right. Why do you hate July? <laughs> it's just you know why? Because I've been on a sabbatical for a month and it missed me. <laughs> I missed July. I don't know where it went. You didn't miss July. You Actually, did so I lived. much. <laughs> yeah. July. Actually, I totally lived July. Yeah, you lived July. We missed you. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I, it's funny because I was talking to my girlfriend last night. I go, I'm so tired. And she said, I go, I don't know if I have a virus or what, but I go home. I take a nap. I get up. I walk around in a daze, and then I go back to bed. And she's like, bloody hell, think about everything you've been doing. I wonder what friend that was, huh? And I said, well, and she said, you went to Havasi, you went to Illinois, you went to Paris, you went to Las Vegas. She's like, I've been sitting here. <laughs> I, I only had one day of that. It was Tuesday. And that was the day B-Rad called me at home after our meeting, our boss, and said, you know, you were nodding your head like er saying everything was okay, but you didn't look okay. Oh. And I went to call him back and go, Dude, I'm in a coma. It just didn't hit me Monday. It hit me Tuesday. That's yeah. the day I didn't get out of bed for 13 hours. Well, and that's what she said. I go, well, and I know this sounds like kind of stupid, but yeah, I went a lot of places. I go, well, at least you're not tired. <laughs> you're an ass. I know. And she goes, oh, that's right. For last month, I've just been really good at sleeping. And I'm uh, like, okay, well, because, you know, she can't fly out of the country. Right. <laughs> or anywhere for that matter. Right. Yeah. She needs a proper ID. <laughs> yeah. So that felt mean, but I didn't mean to be mean to her. Um. Anyway, so what was I going to tell you? It seemed important. Oh my god, I can't remember. Oh, I know. So you know this uh, 26 year old that I've seen on six dates. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna see him again this weekend or whatever. But Good. um, here's the thing. You know how like some people, some couples, just you look at them and you go, those two don't fit. Yes. I have a feeling that people would look at myself and this 26 year old and say, oh my god, you two don't fit. Yeah. Because, like, myself and Builder Bob, everybody said, wow, you guys look like a couple because we had the same exact smiles. I mean, the exact same, like, right. e. So we looked like we belonged together. I thought you kind of looked like a couple of brother and sister. <laughs> I know. Some people said that, too. And then uh, with FP and I, you know, we fit okay. I mean, you know, we didn't look the same, but we, we looked like a couple. Right. I, I, yeah, I get that one, totally. Right. A lot of people said my ex-husband and I didn't look like a couple because, well, <laughs> yeah. maybe the body language. Um. <laughs> 
But one person I cannot see as a couple is this here, Ben Affleck and Vanessa Carey. No, I... I, I the daughter of uh, John yeah, Carey. Yeah, I think I can see it. You can? Yeah. I can't. What? You know who's another good, uh, not a good couple? And you pointed out to me yesterday, John Edwards and his wife. Oh, don't even get me started there. Yeah. Yeah, they're not a good couple. Not a good Why? couple. Because he's way too young and handsome for her. And she's Buffon Betty. With yeah. a giant, giant booty. I she did I did notice that she had the uh, well, maybe Wilma she, Flintstone's mom body. Yeah, and maybe she's making her hair accommodate her ass. Oh. You know what I mean? Like cuz sometimes if you're a pair, you try to go for more of a I don't know. I've parrot. always I've <laughs> always wondered about that cuz you probably get married like John Edwards, they probably got married when they were both cute. Right. And she de-evolved fast, which can happen in a marriage, and so what? You work around it, you do this, or one of you becomes the vice presidential candidate or a rock star or whatever, and you're married to the frumpy lady. Yeah, and she is frump a lady. Mm -hmm. But he might be all religious and stuff, because we'd have heard already. I mean, the second they saw her, some tabloid started digging around going, hey, is the cute little senator guy boofing somebody else? Well, he's way too handsome for her. I'm afraid he is. Yeah, he's way too handsome for her. I mean, I want to go in and do extreme makeover and, like, cut her hair and do something. Make it not so... Liposuction or keister. But, I mean, really, you know, whatever about her keister because she could get the right clothes to make her keister look better because what she's wearing is not keister friendly. Right, but <laughs> but I don't think you can get the... I think you can get the right clothes to make that keister look better. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, she's not wearing. I don't think you can buy. She's clothes not wearing to... keister friendly attire. I mean, we've even seen the big fat Winona Judd wear like cute clothes and make her ass look better, you know. And she at least wears good makeup and good hair. This chick, she's got dumb hair. She looks like your grandma, where he looks like you could be a couple with right. her. And, right. And I feel like she might even wear blue eyeshadow. I don't know. I didn't see really that close to her eyes, but. <laughs> I think she might be in that warp. Wow, that's not good. No, you know, like in the, I do the hair thing with the flip, and then I do the blue eyeshadow, and then I pull on my pantyhose with the control top. And Democrats cheat. And then I wear my long skirt, and uh, it's not ass flattering at all. Mm -mm. Because I, I think it's New Self Magazine or whatever, they have one girl's booty, and they have five different pair of jeans. Yeah. And it is amazing what those jeans do. By the way, if you have a bigger booty, tinier pockets. It's a key. Really? That's yeah. smart. Yeah, it looks. I mean, you should see this girl's butt go from like, wow, and same girl's butt. And not different control top who's it? Nope. Or? Uh, uh just different jeans. That's funny, because you know, would you ever come across that ad and really care? Except you'd think, wow, five pictures of somebody's butt. Well, it's cool. weird how like the one pair of pants that are higher and it has that one weird golf pocket. Oh my God, her ass looked huge. <laughs> you know that one little fake pocket or whatever yeah. with the little button? Yeah, anyway. All right, so uh, couples that don't fit, I agree wholeheartedly. Now, I've got Ben Affleck. I noticed no. more because you said it to me, but yeah. uh, it was very obvious. Yeah, they don't fit. See, and I've got Ben Affleck, the he whore, with Jennifer Garner. Well, that fits better to me. Anyway. Yeah. I would say, though, out of all the people, I would probably have the cutest kids with Builder Bob because they look, you know, like, they, except for they might come out with a big tooth. Okay, um, <laughs> I would like to be your friend and be helpful here. Uh huh. In the beginning, you haven't even gotten to date seven, which is the big date, and you're already talking about how your kids with your last boyfriend might have been cuter. I think you want to cut this part of your life out as no, soon no, no. as possible. No, I was just thinking because oh well, because I didn't catch you up in my head where I was. <laughs> right. Because I was just thinking about how couples you you fit with and, right. and couples you don't, and out of everybody that I ever dated, we agree that Builder Bob and I look like. Like um, a couple or, you know, whatever. And um, and it's funny because I think out of all of us, Monica and Poncho look like they should be together the most. I agree. Yeah, I they agree. totally look like a, a couple. That's because everybody else uh, in the room has girls too hot for them. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. But, um, I don't, well, they just fit or something. I don't know. He's it's, all rugged and handsome and Latino, and she's all... Rugged and handsome and no, Latino. Actually, they're exact opposite because, I mean, he's rugged and handsome and she's like more of a, a flowery girl. A girly girl. Yeah. My and so girl. for whatever reason, they like they, they seem to fit. I do think, though, that J-Lo fit the best with P. Diddy. Yeah. Out of everybody, I thought she fit the best with him, personally. But um, Ben Affleck fitting with uh, this Carrie chick, that's why we're talking about this. Is, I don't know. Vanessa Carey. Well, here's the reason, because I've got them in my papers. They hooked up uh, with Jessica, Jessica Garner on the set of Daredevil, and now it's hot and heavy. They would be a good couple. But you know why I like the Carey girl for him? Because I believe that he believes 
he's going to replace JFK Jr. I he's going to run for office can't. someday. He can't. The J-Lo thing ruined him. You don't think you ever get over that? No, nope, I mean, I, I don't think he's going to get over it during the course of our careers. No, it he's ruined be... him in film, and I think it, it just ruined him. Yeah. It just did. And you know when what's... he did that video and everything. And he's too big a gambler. It's kind of known yeah, that he and he's goes alcoholic. Yeah, and and yeah. More acceptable these days, yeah. a drunk gambler for president. I'll tell you who's going to be our next president after our this next term. next president? Yeah. No, not after. I mean, after this term or whatever, and the next one. Uh, it'll be actually it'll be a couple terms. Is the uh, state senator from Chicago, Osama, Obama. Obama. Yeah. Who? He's gonna be our first black president for sure, without a doubt. And I am putting my money on it right now. Okay. He's amazing. He is an amazing man. He is the. State- What's so great about him? He's uh, the way he speaks is. I don't know. I I just. I mean, he got everybody in the Democratic convention, national convention, just. Um, I don't know. He's motivating. I didn't see him. He's positive. He's a family guy. He's... I think the name Osama well, is going to hold him back. Well, that's the thing. I think he should go with Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Osama Jones? No, that's or his Jones last name. Or Jones Bin Laden? What's... Obama. Obama. O-B- Your mama. O-B-A-M-A. Obama. Obama. See, either way, he is he is just fodder for Jay Leno and David Letterman right now. Yeah. Obama. The yeah. Obama part, not working out, but I'll tell you what. Uh, he's the state senator from Illinois, and he's a, a black, handsome man, and just really well-spoken, and he is like their superstar. Yeah? Yeah, he's going to be the next black, well, not the next. There hasn't been The one. first, right. The first black president. You I think there'll be a black president years. or a woman president first? Black. Yeah, before a female? Yeah, I think it'll be him. Really? That that close down the road? Yeah, I really think it, I, and they're like grooming him for it. Are they? Yeah. That's a neat idea. They do that with a lot of those guys. Groom the candidates in yeah. advance. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do they that, do. and those pageant moms groom their little kids for that crap, too. It's, I, I could not bring myself to tear away from Amish in the city. Oh, I didn't get to see it. How was it? Cruel. It was? Yes. Why? Well, first of all, the Amish are full-blown Amish, but you would think you get Ezekiel. you think the old guy with the beard and no mustache, right? Uh, by the way, this is uh, Amish in the City. It's a new show on... Right. Uh, when, what? What? Yeah, UPN. UPN. Okay. Right. So it's on last So night. it's a fish out of water story, if you will. It's the reverse of the simple life, right? Right. They moved this Amish family to a house in the Hollywood Hills with a, a bunch of cool folks, stylists, blah. And it's not a fish out of water story. They'd be okay. And sure enough, things surprise them, like escalators and the beach made them all cry. And hair dryers. Why did the beach but make them cry? They'd never seen it. They'd, they'd, You're kidding. No, no. It, yeah, it was Are the awe-inspiring. Amish still like the beach? Uh, well, that's the end story, really. One of them oh, almost good. drowns to death and what, has to be rescued. Why don't they like the beach? They've never seen one. Why? I don't know. They don't have TVs and they're from the Midwest and they've never seen one. Never took a little uh, vacation? I like guess on not. <laughs> Chevy Chase, his <laughs> Amish vacation? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it would be funny to watch the goofy-ass Amish. And they're not that goofy-ass. They're, they don't look like you think they're all going to look. And they chain when they go to the beach and are talked into putting on regular clothes and stuff like that. They're like chicks and guys. That's what they are. They're just a little so no kind of big. backward. But the city guys are cruel to them. Why? What do they do? Just make fun of them at every possible chance they well, get. Well, I guess because it's to... not that cool. I mean, because it's not working. The show sounds like it's not working because they're not that shocked. Yeah, they're not. Okay. They're not that shocked. And the only... the. The, uh, one of the better parts for, for me was this guy had what he called his Bebo stick. He invents little toys, and he, he looks at one of the city guys, and they're all super cool guys, and he goes, well, do you guys like like puzzles and games? And the guy goes, what? He goes, you know, like puzzles, not the kind like a jigsaw puzzle, but puzzles and games. And the guy goes, no. And he goes, oh, because I brought about 30 with me. And what he does is he carves w- little wooden puzzles. Yeah, the Amish furniture store. But the Amish guy totally pulled a fast one on these guys. He said he had this thing called this Bebo stick. It was a stick with a propeller, and you'd rub the stick up and down with another right, stick, and, it makes it spin. and the propeller would spin. I know, my dad makes it. Spin. And then you'd say Bebo, <laughs> and it would start spinning the other way. It's also a variation on a magic trick. I, I happen to know how it was done, too. Uh-huh. But the city slickers not only couldn't figure it out, but like in two seconds ago, well, this is stupid sticks and just throw it down the guy's feet. It's like sad and mean. Well, it doesn't sound good. It was eminently watchable. Was it? Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, did they do like an extreme makeover on the girls? Yes. Okay. And they shaved the guy, the older guy, the guy that would be Ezekiel. Was, but he, he's... was he handsome underneath? 
Uh, he didn't have a beard. He didn't, uh, he didn't he look like that. He's thing. a younger guy. He's probably 10 years younger than me. He's just the oldest guy. Did they take they their shaved hats his off? body. Ugh. Yeah, they took off their bonnets and then they were in bikinis. They came off kind of fine. They came, looked a little backward, but not nearly as backward as you thought the I mean, Amish would be. Did they look hot? Like, was it extreme makeover where the Amish like go from, from Amish to like, oh my God, yummy? Not oh my God, yummy, but the girls were as imminently bonable as the city slicker girls in their bikinis. Yeah. They're good. They're fine. Yeah. I just thought the city slicker guys, I think you're right, that nobody was this big spaz fish out of water, so they made these guys turn on this very nice family. Now, are they going to be welcomed back to the Amish community after living this way? Well, you have to even guess so far if they go back or do they pick the new lifestyle. They're in a big-ass house. These are attractive young people, except for the oldest one who's a reasonably attractive 35 year old the other guys are the other Amish are young and anything could happen to them and i i'm Gretchen thinks they're all going to go back to the way they the, the, things were i'm thinking they're going to lose one of them at least but it, it's more comfortable to go back to how you're raised i think yeah but i think california especially with the taste of the spotlight you can change you can change your mind and and it, was it hard to like make them you know use uh, the microwave cuz they wanted to go outside and like boil something and I don't see that's where they run into problems with the show no, because oh. they'd go, dude, it'll take 30 seconds if you do it in the microwave, and they'd go, well, that's great. Really? How do you use it? And they'd show them, and they'd be thrilled, and you loved them for being so happy with your everyday convenience. Well, this is But then they'd cut to the city guys calling them retards for not knowing the microwave, but all they did was go, oh, that was a big time saver. Thanks. I'll use that microwave thing. I'm sorry I missed it, I think. Yeah, I no, know. you are. I'm not I'm not doing the best job because I was also having uh, Isabella issues at the time, so I was running in and out of the room just right. catching segments. Right. But I would also say what Tebow. I miss. No, I need a kid that will settle the F down. Yikes. <laughs> a big shout out to the Persian excursion. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. I was listening to my voicemail here at work. Yeah. And these guys at 4 a.m. this morning leave a voicemail here at work. <laughs> Saying the Persian excursion is on their way. Just wanted to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> was there was like specific hi, Jamie? It's us, us, the Persian excursion. Yeah, I don't know who they are, and they said their names like I'm supposed to know them, and I don't know them. I'm fairly confident that you don't know the Persian excursion. I, I have no idea who's the Persian excursion. My guess is it's a bunch of Iranians going out to party at four in the morning on a Thursday. Hey, Thursday, this is the Friday of the Millennium. But at 4 a.m.? Yeah, it's really the Wednesday carryover. <laughs> is this your message? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hey, it's Jamie and Danny. You're on the radio. Oh, Jesus. Uh, hello? 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 <sighs> Call him back. I you can't accept that. Weird. Well, that's not right. Because he didn't sound hungover enough to be confused. He sounded like he was mad. He didn't sound Persian. Shouldn't he have said Allah or something instead of Jesus? (laughs) (laughs) Well, right, and they just called two and a half hours ago. Voice message system. Three, one. Call again. I can't. One more time. They turn off their phone. I don't know who the you know, person is. We're on an eight-second delay when he realizes we're not making fun of him because he's going to wake up and turn on his radio. Right. Then maybe he'll talk to us. Well, they were just up. But they left a message at 4 a.m. this morning on my voicemail here at work. Forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Three. See? The Persian excursion Dude, has, hey, has Persian pooped excursion out. Persian guy. Our phone numbers are one 487 We just want to talk to you and we'll see what your party was about last I know. night. And why is he so angry? Well, I think he was just caught off guard. But he called me on my voicemail here at work. And he left that phone number? Or yeah. was, did that come up it automatically? Came up. It came up automatically. Did they say anything mean or nasty? No, they... they just said, hey, Jamie, it's big, blah, blah, and do blah, blah, and la, 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 and we're the Persian excursion. Call us back. Wow. They even have a patch. <laughs> oh, they have a patch. What? <laughs> the Persian excursion patch. What, what the hell is the, this all the about? The patch is a military thing. The Persian excursion shows an aircraft carrier with jets and stuff, so it could have been like some mission over to the Middle East, but I don't think that's who called you. Uh, I don't. <laughs> so are these are these Persian guys with an aircraft carrier? Or is this us invading? <laughs> us invading. Oh, okay. So they're for us. Yeah. Right? So that's why he said Jesus. Okay. Instead of there's just one God and Allah is Jesus. his prophet, which is a rather long how do you do. 
Well, now that is just, I feel, I feel weird because I got a message at 4 a.m. and now I call back two and a half hours later and get hung up on. You know what? Maybe they had a little bit too much to drink on leave and they're going to go invade a country later this morning and weren't supposed to tell you. Well, then they should not call random radio stations <laughs> right. and leave messages. They're going to invade Canada and we got to keep it a secret. Well, you know what's creepy to me is this phone number looks familiar. But I do that all the time. Remember how I used to <laughs> all the time, like, oh, my God, that girl. I've seen that phone number on the caller ID of FP's house. Oh, my God, yeah. But actually, that would turn out to be right. <laughs> Not every 600 times. Right, but, you know, 550. <laughs> wow. We got to think of something else. Like yeah, that. I was thinking that today. Time. It's, it's almost time. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Uh, gosh, can you believe that it, it, there's one month left in the summer? Yeah, but at least here in California, it feels no, like I summer know. until... Yeah, day. I know, but technically, you're like your kids go back to school right. and all that crap. One month left. Be Woo! careful what you wish for. Gretchen was all happy that she wouldn't be shuttling children back and forth, and now she just can't wait to be shuttling children back and forth. I know a lot of those moms Yeah, kind of ready for summer vacation to be over. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, Jack, a longish all. It's that getting dark early stuff that I don't like. You know, it'll yeah. start in the fall. We'll start to get dark at like five o'clock. I agree. And you know what I, I'm sad about? I'm not really sad, but um, because I've had a great summer and I have no qualms about it. But I had like these fantasies about summer. I don't know if y'all have that. I do. Where I had a fantasy of like a picnic on a beach with the sun setting, a glass of wine or Chianti. Um, and, you know, some grapes without the sand all over it because that inevitably happens. I mean, just, you know, like those. Can you not even get through your own <laughs> fantasy without wrecking it? No, I'm saying without the sand on it because, you know, that crap happens. But, you know, just like those nights, those like hot evenings where you're on the beach and, and you're having like the, the sunset, whatever. Yeah, thing. you're not very far off from one of my summer fantasies. Yeah, yeah. and I have not had that happen. We got all of August. It's a very hot month. Yeah, but my sister's coming for a week next week, and so there won't be any of that. It'll be Kool-Aid and, like, Oreo cookies. What? I can't help you with this, but <laughs> what? what we should do yes? is this weekend I'll come over to your house and help you decorate for Christmas because that's <laughs> going to be the next thing is Christmas is here, and I didn't do I, my I didn't Christmas do fantasy. I was, this was the year I was going right. to be the house on the so block. So why not cut to the chase? I'll come over and help you decorate for Christmas, and we'll have that one out of the way. And then around Christmas time, we'll do the summer thing. And we'll just get this, cut this stuff off. But right wait a minute. All right, you know what? You're acting like I'm a tard. Yes, it is true that Christmas lets right. me down because I do want to be the girl on the no, block. No, Christmas does not let you down. I let me you down. You let down Christmas. Right. And yes, it is true that I have all the decorations, and I want to make an right. amazing Christmas every year. Year. That is true. It is true. But I am not the only woman. I mean, surely, and don't call me Shirley, but perhaps you guys, you have a wife that feels the same way around Christmas tri time. <laughs> time. No? No. Yeah. Oh, no? Not that we don't do it, but she ha she forces me. We actually have like an attic thing. I have to climb up and get, get all this crap down in sure. like early November, and she leaves it up until mid-January. Okay, well, here's my next one that I'm going to feel pressure about. Um, and I think a lot of you women, and could you please call and explain to, to uh, uh, Danny and the Pip, the lone Pip. <laughs> yeah. He's the lone Pip. Danny and the lone Pip about your letdowns, about how we, we are, I don't know, we have this fantasy about summer and a big blanket and, and our husbands or our boyfriends bring this cooler and they have all the fixins, not like, you know, coleslaw and fixins? stuff. Fixins? But I mean like the blanket and the and like a, a sweatshirt, oversized sweatshirt with them that's fleece and if it gets chilly on the beach and the wine and the... I don't know. We no, have this thing. I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent about that, and that is a very interesting thing to throw out about women and their, their disappointments. On a side note, I don't know anybody else that says this was supposed to be the year <laughs> so many times about so many things. Christmas. You've already done it twice today. No. Well, Christmas is my given. I mean, Christmas is my go-to. What about this was the year you were actually going to be a bachelorette at the bachelorette party? But this was my first year. Right, but I, there's... But, I mean, Christmas has always let me down. <laughs> I've let myself down with Christmas. But here's the next one, is that, you know, on my block, they have this crazy thing at Halloween where they shut down all right. the streets, and my neighbors all make haunted houses and the whole deal. I mean, they make it crazy. 
and I want this to be my Halloween year. We still have time. I know. So can you come over, Jack? Yeah, we'll do that first. <laughs> because everybody on the street makes their house, their garages into haunted houses, and you have to go through a maze. Can't you do that witch that flew into the dirt? And... I did that, and then FP and I broke up, and then I beat it up and threw it at his house because he got it for me. I beat up the witch that flew and into my house. threw it at his house? Yeah. And the problem is, a lot of people in Santa Monica work in the entertainment industry, <laughs> are set decorators. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and they, they go over uh, the top, uh, out of control, and you're there with your, like, paper mache witch, and no. it just doesn't compare. And my neighbors, what they did is they did strobe lights all inside their garage, and then they did that smoke. Dry ice smoke. You know, some people are, <laughs> Forget are it. brilliant to that stuff, but some go too far and scare children. Oh, like yeah. They, they, Isabella just will not go. No, up those some of stairs. the garages you wouldn't go in. But I got to tell Especially you. Especially the guy with the axe. Yeah, <laughs> kind, of, kind of a little change of topic here, but speaking of scary stuff, I was so impressed with Stench's practical joke while camping. I went home and told Isabella, and we want to do it to somebody. Oh, the sound effects? If you weren't listening yesterday, yeah. here's, boy, he won me over with this Until story. He, did the chainsaw. he took, he took <laughs> a one hour cassette. Erased half of it so there was a half hour of nothing, then put on wolves howling and growling, went out in the woods to take a pee, hit play, came back, was smoking a stoke, and a half hour later, you start hearing wolves and, and things. And he acted like he was scared too. That was, that's no, awesome. That is awesome. That was really a good one. And then he went with a chainsaw, and then everybody and then, knew. And- I don't know, I'd still be kind of scared of the chainsaw. Um, but I don't know. Dude, what... there's a guy with a wolf and a chainsaw. But let me ask you guys this. I mean, so do poodle. do men ever have that kind of like fantasy in your head where you want to have the beach and the sunset? Yes, and sure. Well, then why don't you guys go out of your way and create it? Why we just make the girls do it? I know that's the thing. It's like I know that I, if I want this, I have to do it myself. Yep. Well, no, you can. The six date guy. Yeah. He'll do it. He won't. If he knows that's what you really want to do and he likes you, he will. It's just no, he further down the road, he won't. <laughs> I would never. He won't. He's like a football guy. He won't. He's like, he's not like no, that. No, I, you know, you, you, you do guys do stuff in the wooing I, stage. I don't see that happening ever with him. Really? He, yeah, he's not like that. Never. No. Guys this this is, by the way, to... this is not the guy. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a guy. <laughs> All right. But good. Yeah. I, you yeah. know what? Maybe that's who you should be with. I'm no. This guy is not my guy. I know, but this is just a uh, save a horse, ride a cowboy guy. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. Maybe the answer to some of your woes would be to date seriously the guy who isn't the guy. You've had serious jealousy issues uh-huh. where they have been your demise, even if they right. were warranted. Right. 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 But if he's not the guy, yeah, he's not the guy. This, you know what? You might be able to have some fun without getting hurt for an extended period of time. Uh, that could be all right, but I mean, but the, that the not guy doesn't do the cool stuff like the beach thing and stuff. But going back to, do you guys have letdowns like at holidays, or is this no. just totally a girl thing? Well, uh, this year was excellent, but sometimes my favorite holiday is Fourth of July. Uh-huh. No gifts, no family, no expectations, and what I want are explosions <laughs> and barbecue. <laughs> And there's been a few Fourth of Julys where I've been very let down by like the fireworks. That's so sucks funny. Is that is like the guy's thing? Is you guys want explosions and barbecue? That's okay. my ultimate That's holiday. Funny. It's also, by the way, it's Jack's ultimate holiday. It's the recipe for every good guy movie. You know, you throw in a pair of jugs, and you got a runaway summer blockbuster. Right, right. But I mean, so that but that's your fantasy is Fourth of July. Is it yours? Uh, like what you want, the like the perfect thing, to, and it doesn't go that way. Or- I absolutely. I, I, when I am doing something, when I am active, I enjoy it as much as anyone else. In the planning of something to enjoy, I want to be left alone and not bothered with it. Christmas, Fourth of July, no, Halloween, it's all a big well, hassle. And, and like women get uh, let down with our birthdays as well. We're big let downers on birthdays. You guys, the birthday let down. I would much rather be no. Valentine's. You guys. Yeah, we get you let guys. down on Valentine. Do you is do you agree with him that Fourth of July is your thing or what's no, your no, thing? No, no, I'm 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 with you. I'm actually all about Christmas. I gotta Aww. make sure my tree is the right big Aww, size tree. The big free it's guy. decorated. It's it's up enough time before Christmas so that I can enjoy it. And it has to also have the lights on the house. So that you can the enjoy it. I'm so yes. excited. I love Christmas. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> Me too? No. no, him. him. 
I'm so you Christmas. can enjoy it? I love Christmas. I'm excited about this. Yeah, I, 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 I pick out my tree every year. The, the wife twinkle in his kid's eyes. See, if, if I could swap dads and husbands and just put some clone in there that would go do all that stuff, I'd I do that. I love that you love Christmas. Is, love it, Christmas. is it because of the kids, mostly? Uh, no, I've always been into it. Even, even no kids. I've been into Christmas so forever. So Christmas has let you down before, too. Oh, yeah. I screw up Christmas a lot. See? He knows my pain. If the if my sister's raviolis weren't good, I would be disappointed in Christmas, but that has never happened. So you don't have anything you're ever disappointed in as far as like those holidays or birthdays or anything like that. Last call. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave on that. No, I got a bottle in my car. Personally, I was talking about my own personal disappointment in summer is that I wanted to you know, it's August, and I still haven't done this, which is like the beach, sunset, wine, and like a little picnic at sunset right. kind of thing. And I haven't done that. Somehow it, it, it spiraled into Christmas and Thanksgiving, and and Fourth of July is Jack's favorite. Um, and, you know, he's let down sometimes because it's not barbecue and explosions. Well, then Stench just started screaming in the hallway. He remembers one that always lets him down. Which is? Super Bowl Sunday. Really? I yep. See that. He says, since he's been married... Super Bowl Sunday now has let him down <laughs> because his wife <laughs> in the middle of the game will make him do stuff. <laughs> what kind of stuff? Because she doesn't realize, not like my game. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's a different game. Like chores. <laughs> I, I didn't realize until right now that I have a, a fantasy that I could have easily fulfilled and never got to. And there are years that I could have done it. I always wanted to make love to my wife on the deck of my boat. Oh, yeah, go, that's a good one. Go way out in the middle of nowhere. You can see anything as far as the horizon in right. every single direction. But it would be her closest thing ever to any kind of risky sex, Right, if but you that'd will. be awesome. But also be the most romantic thing. I've had that fantasy since before I owned boats, yeah, you know? Yeah, that'd be hot. So I had the sailboat, and she just hated it. Well, because you have to have that big layout pad in the front because but, you're just laying on fiberglass otherwise. <laughs> but then I had the, the, the big boat that would have been easy to do on and stuff. And we just never, ever oh, got that's around to it. And she promised me. And now you sold them. Yeah, well, I had to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you can't just go crashing into the beach because yeah. you got wrapped in thread. Right, thread, <laughs> yes. I saw the thread. It was ooh, what, a My spindle. baby was almost on board that one, you know. <laughs> but that was, that's a huge disappointment to me that we never had that love making, a bottle of wine I know, that's out a there good on the one. deck, make love to Why my not? wife in the hot sun. Like, can you come here? Yeah, that that actually that is a. That really is always. I'm gonna. I'd like to call her and yell at her. She promised. Uh, the closest person I I actually like almost fulfilled all my like sexual fantasies with. I would say with FP. I mean that was crazy. Like anything that you imagined. Yeah. See, I don't really have <laughs> sexual fantasies like that as hardcore anymore. I have romantic fantasies. No, now. no, no. I mean, even like, yeah. you know, uh, just in it about it. Yeah, if I, if I put my wife in one of your sex swings. <laughs> Not that. I just leave her there and get something we to eat. We never did that. That, that We never, ever. No, ever. I just meant one like yeah. at jamiewhite.com. I mean, all yeah. that stuff that you, you can use. I'm beyond that now. Yeah. No, I, I'm even talking about just, you know, just stuff. Yeah, your picnic, my my boat. Yeah. Well, and now, Monica, hi, how are you? Hi. How yeah, long have now you that been you're the... doing it like rabbits. Uh, yeah. uh, I can't think of them like that. They're just children. <laughs> <laughs> Not Poncho. If I just big man. Poncho's all about it yeah, now. Uh, the Polish sausage or the Mexican meatloaf. Chariso. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Mexican meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of is chorizo. What? You weren't here for the whole sex mirror thing. What? I think you were on sabbatical. Oh, you were on sabbatical? Spivey, no, be glad you were not Spivey here. Spivey read her and figured out that they have a sex mirror that and Frank likes to look. It. That I walked into the room for something else. Right. And, he and just, Spivey read her and nailed oh, her. Oh, but you know why, though? <laughs> well, Everybody's here's the it. deal. Because they have an apartment, and usually the apartment, uh, the um, closet doors are mirrored to make the, the bedroom look bigger. Is that what you got going on? We have a full-length mirror at the door, on the door. That's yeah. hot. Yeah, it's hot. It's, yeah, it's that's hot. hot. <laughs> Our apartment rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you mention the spanking part? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, Poncho likes to be spanked. He said the yeah that he Wait. wants to be spanked. He wants you to spank him. Yeah. Oh, you missed out. And that Dude, he wants you took to the make wrong a time video, to break down. and that if I don't agree to it, he's gonna hide it somewhere. He's gonna hide a video camera somewhere. He wants to video you. Uh huh. Huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I said, be glad you were not. I would here. use red, uh, red uh, lights. The red yeah. light yeah. bulbs. Yeah, red light bulbs. Uh, yeah, I'd prefer just no it light doesn't bulbs really, at all. You don't look like you think you look. No, yeah, no, no. Everything I want to say was so mean. I know. I know. 
No, don't. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> No, just leave it alone. Stop it. It's fun. Stop. Anyway, Even, um, ugh. so what's your uh, disappointment? <laughs> it's similar to yours, but I the took it The fact that up. your husband wants to be spanked? No. <laughs> In front of the mirror while videotaping uh, it? Uh, yeah, yeah. What up with Poncho? <laughs> what is up with Poncho? <laughs> it's a new game. It comes right after no, What's Wrong with Poncho's, Jack. Actually, he's very sad this morning. Why? His grandmother just passed away. Sorry to she found out that you were spanking we him in front of the mirror and had to grab her. The one with the mustache? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if the mom has a mustache, you know the grandma has a mustache. No, sometimes that <gasps> skips a generation. <laughs> <laughs> grandma had a beard. I hope they shave it before they do the viewing. <gasps> What? I am not being rude. Line just... cross. <laughs> not funny. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. 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 Wouldn't you want your grandma's beard shaved before the viewing? No. No. You'd want her just as is? Yeah, you should see my grandma's beard. It rocks. <laughs> Except they keep thinking she's a terrorist. <laughs> Let's leave Poncho alone. He lost his grandmother. He's not gay. Let's just leave him alone. Okay, remind me tomorrow. <laughs> when we're not being nice. Jeez. What do you want to be reminded of? So I have I know. a theory on Poncho now that he likes to be spanked. I... Does that have anything to do with him being a gay wrestler? All right. We're going to go back to something nice. Here's the thing. We were talking about uh, disappointments in life. And we all, as women, I thought it was a women, a woman thing. But we have a couple with the Stench loves Christmas and he's been let down. Right. Jack's been let down with the 4th of July. Uh, Danny uh, doesn't. Romance on the high seas. Romance on the high seas. And Monica has what I think a lot of us girls have. Monica, can you come here? We won't talk about Poncho's dead grandma with the beard. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, wait, Monica has something that a lot of you girls and myself included have. Boobs? And, no. no. And I don't know what it is, and I don't know where we get this fantasy. I think it might be from soap operas. I'm okay. not sure. But what is it that you have in your house that I also have in my house that I've never I've looked at it but I've never used? It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's got two handles. Mm-hmm. It's got that checkered lining in the inside, on the inside, and it's got that, it's plastic, <laughs> but it looks like fine china. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got the cutlery. And it's the, the picnic basket. Uh, it's that I have a great pic- picnic basket. Beautiful basket. picnic basket with all the utensils, and like she said, yeah. it, it looks like fine china. It has yeah. the, the plastic the wine, where that looks like wine. Plastic glass. I like, have one. Danny yeah. has what we all have. Mine are actual glass. Whoa, uh, fancy My topper. mom got it for me. What? Well, and it's this beautiful thing. Oh, my God. And, and I we, was going to picnic, and we were going to watch the sunset somewhere, yeah. and it's just It's never there. happened. But here's the other thing I think about, the picnic basket. Um, and, I, you know, I, too, got one at Pier 1 or whatever, and and I've always had that fantasy of how great. It, it's it got place settings for, like, eight people. Right. <laughs> yeah. And It makes the, you feel lonely. Well, and not only that, but you can't fit eight people worth of food, food in, in the, the basket, basket that's holding all the stuff for eight people. No, you have right. to unbuckle cu- the things because yeah, they buckle they buckle, in. Right. Unbuckle them, You're take them me. out, put in sandwiches, buckle your sandwiches in. Yeah, yeah. D- technically, you take all yeah. that crap out, you leave it for two, and then you take all that stuff. But how many of you have it sitting there and you you've dreamt it? But where did Who's that ever used? It? Where Who's did that, that fantasy come from? Was it soap you know operas? What? I don't know because I've actually come to think of it now. Because I'm so into that idea, my mom bought me the one with the real glass stuff. I have a backpack picnic basket oh. and that keeps a bottle of but wine cold as well. Either. Never used it. Couldn't find it for a million dollars. But where did this fantasy come from? I don't know because passion makes me have a fantasy for magical dwarves. Yeah, but so then that not, guy passed away. He, right. he had he's a beard, with, you know. But he's with grandma. They're in better places. <laughs> They're in a circus in heaven. <laughs> hey! God's little freak show. But at least they're welcome because we won't be after this show. Right. All right, Grandma, you can come in, but you got to take the cage right next to the dwarf. <laughs> That's but the mission nice. is free in heaven. So see the bearded lady and the midget. Everything's free after you pay for your sins, which means we're not going to have a lot of credit left over. <laughs> anyway, sorry. All right. So, yeah, we're sorry. Um, but there are those we. I can't Because yeah. I, for whatever reason, I have grandma up there in heaven with her. A bearded dwarf. What, Jack? What are you disappointed in besides uh, the show? Uh, <laughs> well, the other day, it was probably uh, 
a few weeks before vacation. Uh. It was Saturday. My wife's like, what are we going to do? And I came up with this great idea. I said, we'll have a picnic. Oh, nice. And she went, oh. Oh. <laughs> and I made her do it anyway. Oh, you had one? Yeah, we went to the park and we did it. We had the picnic. Did you have a basket? Uh, no, we don't have a basket. We have a backpack. We don't actually have, like, unlike you guys, the unused thing. <laughs> we actually did it, but we didn't have any of the proper so utensils. So you used, like, plastic. Tupperware. And, and plastic yeah. bags from the grocery right, store. Right, exactly. He did it, though. He did it, but it wasn't proper. No. No, because <laughs> I've done it not proper. I've gone yeah. down to Echo Park, where that lake is. Oh, yeah, yeah. In yeah. L.A.? Yeah. yeah. I've gone down there, and there was a lunch truck. Yeah. And Gretchen and I ate from the lunch truck sitting next to that Echo Park Lake, whatever that thing is uh, Yeah, called. I've had an improper picnic. Yeah, yeah me My too. My ex-husband did the whole Subway sandwiches. Right. And, yeah, yeah, I've done that a few times now that I think and, about and it. And like two Diet Cokes. Right. But no picnic <laughs> basket. And we, Nothing that Yogi would steal. And we sat on our like shirts, our sweatshirts. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't count. We also did the sex on the beach thing once. I did that. But it sucked. Right. The reality of this stuff is no, like the other day on Saturday, we ended up. I, I have told to put you, something down. Right. I did. I told you we went to Moe's on the pier because originally we were going to go to the beach. Yeah, I remember that story, bitch. And <laughs> so you go to the beach and there's sand in your food and it's a pain in the ass and the blanket right? blows away. Or we could sit at a restaurant. Somebody could serve us fine food and clean I up know, after us. I know, but it's a fantasy, Jack. I want a blanket on the beach. I, you know, it's a right. fantasy. But I, I agree. You're, there's Jack's sand right. and yeah. stuff. And I know, but if you get a really big blanket, there's still a little area in the middle. <laughs> we, were, we were driving up to San Francisco. <laughs> Gretchen and I, and I, I was talking to her about how I've always, let's make love on the beach, and she right. thought it was a good idea, but she's very timid about all sorts of stuff, but it was at night, so we pull out this towel from the back of the car, and we go, and we start to make love, <laughs> and it's a Disney towel, and I just oh, noticed yeah, there's yeah. all these cartoon yeah. characters looking at my privates, yeah, that, and I just lost that, all interest. That's Pocahontas improper, was staring. Yeah, yeah. Pocahontas chick. Yeah, yeah. That, that will ruin a moment. That, it did. It yeah. totally did. Yeah. There's no reason for those cartoons to see that part of me. Yeah, that would ruin a moment in a second. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Pinocchio is bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know it? No matter how much I lied. <laughs> No, honey, really, this is the first time I've ever done this. Huh? Still not bigger than Pinocchio. <laughs> what, Jack? You were elongating. Yesterday, my wife got home from work, and she came home, and she gave me a big kiss, and we're hugging. And, you know, because we very rarely get time alone. <laughs> Did she right. think you were someone else? No. <laughs> no, she's just delirious. I'm right. And so, you know, she's getting kind of, you know, in the mood a little, and right. she goes, but we can't do anything. We have that baby. And we both look down, and the baby's on the floor sitting there staring up with this goofy grin on her face. <laughs> like, do it. Right. And it just made us laugh, but it totally ruins oh, the moment. Yeah. You know, like, uh, but you guys had a picnic. Yeah, we did have a but picnic. But did she like it? I, well, you know what her problem is? Her big thing right well, now is... Well, yeah. Well, we got yeah, the answer. Yeah, it's staring it's, right at us. There's two of us. It, one's little, one's big. <laughs> and her problem right now is we never spend any time alone. And with the picnic, we had the baby. And oh. so it's... You know, and the baby loves to go. And we put her... We have this, like, inflatable pool thing that she lays in and stares up. But she wants to do something without the baby. So the picnic wasn't as good because we had the baby. You know? Yeah. Well, How old's the baby? Eight months. Bring the baby to my house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> is your wife going to be there? Hell yes. Okay, that I mean, if we want a funny little bit here, oh no, don't worry, I'll take care of them. But I won't even be alone with my baby. <laughs> I'm against looking out the window and pointing out random objects, but I would just like to say <laughs> the perfect man for your perfect picnic, he's probably actually singing, is outside our window right now wearing a hard hat. Just for you. Did we ever explain this? That your boyfriend works here in the building. <laughs> Lonnie, our friend. We never explained it, right? Oh, no. We didn't? Because, it's, no, it would because, be mean. Yeah, what? And we have to see if you can plug it. Right. Yeah. There's a, Lonnie uh, with the piercing blue eyes. He rocks. He's, he's a very attractive man yeah. that, that works. Black on, belt and karate. Right. Works could protect you. Building. And then and he... Uh, and uh, he's like the super or whatever they call it. Right. And he he's a, Schneider. Um, I don't think he's Schneider. I yeah. think he's more of a manager. Schneider. Yeah. He manages. Right. Like See, Schneider. manager, an executive with piercing blue eyes on a hard hat. But uh, no, because he designed this part or something. I don't know. Like he does construction. It's even better. Anyway, and so um, he drives a golf cart, and one day um, he. He followed me. <laughs> well, you were probably going in the same direction. That's all. 
people were being followed. <laughs> and it was just kind of interesting. That's all. And so that's all y'all need to know. Because <laughs> he's a great guy. He's a sweetheart. He chased me down <laughs> while you were on sabbatical? Yeah. Like, I'm getting in the elevator. I hear, hey, hey, hey. And I'm like, oh, no one's looking for me. And I turn around, and it's it's Lonnie, and he's coming to me. And he deliberately saw me, came all the way across the courtyard, into the elevator, ask me how you were because he hadn't heard you and that you were gone. He was concerned. He's a nice guy. He's, he's the sweetest He's a really man. sweet he heart. With piercing blue eyes. He is a doll. He's a sweetheart. Yep. And we all love him. <sighs> he's a sweetheart. Anyway, going back to uh, things you have in your house that just haunt you and that um, <laughs> that you're disappointed in. <laughs> the thing in my house that disappoints is me. <laughs> yeah, I would see that happening because I do. I feel that right now. <laughs> oh, you're not disappointed. I'm exactly as you expect me to be. Ay, 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 Um... But it also happens when you see somebody out at night, like you're at a, a club or whatever, and you meet this really hot guy, and yeah, yeah, I don't know, make out. Yeah. And then you decide to get together like the next weekend, and then he shows up at your house. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> He's not what you remembered at all. <laughs> you know, that's funny. How about when you go out, and another couple just blatantly looks like they're having more fun than oh, you? Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, I hate that a lot. Or you're at even out with your boyfriend or whatever, and there's a whole table, and they're all having fun. You're like... I've lost myself. Now, has anybody <laughs> ever thought, and and I'm thinking Jack probably, because this might be weird, it might not be. The answer was yes, he did want to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever like been to somebody's house, a friend of yours or something, and it just dawned on you, wow, their life is better than mine? Yes. That's everybody awful. Everybody does that, don't right. you think? Yeah. Well, here's one that's really disappointing. I me. luckily got over that one. And I've shared it with the class, but... Uh, well, and don't take this wrong, Jack, but you were the last person that was, in my opinion, going to have a family. Me too. Out of this yeah. show. Yeah. You know, like Danny, we knew was married. Stench was going to marry a fake black girl. Monica, we knew was going to marry Poncho. You know, so it was Jack and I were the last single people left. Right. And I knew for sure I'd marry fans, fans, and we'd have kids before Jack ever got over sure. Nadia. Sure, right. Well, one day I, I go away for just a weekend, and, and Jack is crying about Nadia, and he's depressed and stuff, and I'm like, oh, well, you know. At least my life's better than Jack's. Right, yeah. right, exactly. My boyfriend cheated, but at least Don't we I'm have not a sad. mug that says at least I'm not Jack? Yeah, yeah. And then I came back on a Monday and the guy got a smoking hot girl, got her knocked up, then got married and had a beautiful baby. Yep. What you the hell happened? You can't turn your back on this guy. I mean, like one day I just woke up and then Jack, the one that I was like, right. you know, whatever. I've got him. Yeah. The guy that gets drunk and dresses up in the wiener suit. I mean, it was just yesterday you were crying. Yeah, exactly. You were crying about Nadia. Right, and then you left town for a day, and when you came back, I had the baby. Remember? Yes! That day? Like, and you I know, yeah, I remember that day, because I came to work. <laughs> <laughs> where was I? I don't know you were sick. Were oh, yeah, yeah. that's you right. I had laryngitis. <laughs> and the Jack wasn't here, and the computers crashed. Um, but it was weird how I turned around, and there's that, you know, and I was supposed to be first, Jack. But you know what you're forgetting? It's actually even worse than that. Okay, thank you. No, not for you. I well, know, maybe. Lonnie's sweet. I know, Lonnie <laughs> is sweet. What a nice boy. Anyway, but Nadia didn't even stop Jack from crying over Samantha. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were still sad over Samantha. Samantha. And then we all turn around, and you, like, remember we had to be his friend because Angela told right. us to? And play tennis with it and drink vodka out of tennis ball holders? Yeah, notice that we. Right. <laughs> well, I just heard about it. <laughs> no, you didn't. You made me go play tennis and drink. <laughs> well, you was... said, and I quote, Jack's going to kill himself. You have to be his friend. No one made you drink. In fact, I said, I don't want any vodka right now. And you... So... You try being your friend sober. <laughs> hey. What's up? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Just very busy. Um, we're, We have uh, this therapist coming up pretty shortly. Pretty shortly. Pretty soon. Yeah. That was pretty shortly. And, um, and so... It's all based on, you know how I said that slow speed come apart? Mm -hmm. And I decided to do this like big life change. In fact, it was so it was so heartbreaking, really, because somebody said to me at this radio ranch, wow, you know what? You were my hero. I mean, right. you, you, you quit. You decided to change your life, blah, blah, blah. And then you came back and completely disappointed me. <laughs> was it me? Oh. No, it was somebody else here. Oh, really? Because I think I said something ex a little less drastic, but kind of with the same... Because I pointed out that whole Blade story. Right. The Richard Blade went away and 
Let me get back to work. Yeah. And I was like, thanks a lot. He goes, well, no, you know, I thought it was really cool that you just like took that chance, that risk. And then a month later, you came back. <laughs> yeah, two weeks. And that was vacation. Yeah. And he's like, you're totally, you're not my hero anymore. I'm like, okay. Anyway, so uh, based on that and, and uh, you know, like the, uh, you know, for a moment, a split second, I was going to change, change my life based on the fact that somebody else was getting married right. and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, just that funky stuff you go through. Uh, and so we have this therapist guy coming in, and he is going to handle, I guess, if you will, any of your life questions. He's really good. We had him on before. I really like yeah. him a lot. And he did a great job. Um, speaking of which, we had a saga earlier where a woman had a missing husband. Right. Um, I don't, do you have their, their yes. number? Okay. Um, he had wandered out the door because right. this was kind of, interesting. He, he has MS, right? but that didn't necessarily, necessarily explain the fact that he also got confused because that isn't necessarily a symptom, right? Right. But right. The fact it's of the matter is I guess. he, he had muscular district or no, uh, MS. muscular, thank you, MS Multiple. and walked out <laughs> of the house using his wooden cane and was not heard from again. This woman was very upset and we did what I think was more than our fair share of trying to locate this man. Right, and we passed him on to Channel 5, and they said you have to wait until a uh, missing persons report is uh, reported. And um, and so we were really worried. I mean, she loves him, and it was, you know, because I said, maybe he's just mad at you. Because I know there's uh, one guy, and he just takes off away from his wife, but that's just because he just doesn't like her right. sometimes. <laughs> Anyway, so um, it was her name was Rosemary. Thank you for this. Her name was Rosemary, and so I think we should call and find out what happened yeah. with that, if you don't mind. I hope everything worked out all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we will call and find out where the hell Rosemary is. Did, did we ever? Well, we get... know where Rosemary is. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. It's uh, her husband Stephen. We're looking for. Okay. Because that would be sad if he never came back. I know, because you'd you'd worry about him feeding himself. Although some of you wish that your husbands would wander off and never come back. I did that for a while. And then it <laughs> happened. And then he did. And now he, too. I woke up one day. He was married. had another baby. Well, he could have been married wow. to Jack. Something is not going right in my life. Uh, you Stephen and Rosemary. She sounds happy. She's out looking for him. She didn't change the machine. Nope. Oh, all right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> can I tell you right now? when <laughs> You won't do that that soon. I, I noticed this with my brother. <laughs> After his wife died... Well, if they die, that's fine. But if they're no, just missing. No, but he didn't. Oh, that's good. The phone, it was her saying, hi, it's Molly and Anthony. We're not home right now for the longest time. And it started, like, at first it was like, oh, he can't bring himself to do it. And then it got kind of creepy when you'd call and hear her voice saying, hi, it's Molly. Well, it's really weird. My dad's really mean because they'll call and ask for my mom. And, uh, you know, it'll be billing or whatever for the cancer and stuff. And it'll be, well, that's going to be hard to do because she's dead. <laughs> wow. Bob White, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. I know. And, like, we went to the bank, and we had to get her name taken off the bank account. My dad just hands over the passbook, and he's like, you're going to have to take Nancy's name off there because she's dead. I'm like, oh, my God, Dad. Jeez. You just, I think that's the way he deals with it. Right. That's too hard to say. And the, and the, if, say, your wife, husband, mother, father, whoever, and you, but you love them dearly, Racks up hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills and then passes away. Do you pay them? No. You just say, bite me. Well, I mean, there's different things because there's insurance for that and there's whatever. Right. It's something life. It's some, some kind of insurance. And then, uh, I mean. But I would never pay the medical bill of a dead person. No. 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 I mean, they can go after collections, but what you do is if you know that they're terminally ill and they're going to die, you sign all the stuff off of, you get their name off of everything. Not that I know this, but we had millions of dollars of bills. So you, you get right. their name off of the house and the cars and stuff. So you can't go into collections. Wow. I mean, she no goes estate. she yeah. goes into collections, but there's no estate left. Right. And I, I know some really good collection agencies, but I would doubt they're going to get their money that way. Well, they can't. Right. Because she she put everything in my dad's name, and right. so they can't go after. But it was weird because she spent all her life insurance. On medical bills. Now, yeah. is that a way to live? I mean, you're supposed to spend your life insurance on medical yeah, bills. Yeah, well, there's a cap. It's like they a million pay dollars. X amount, and then after that, see, I absolutely don't understand. I don't understand life insurance. <gasps> yeah, that the SIU where my dad worked, they pay a million dollars, and then when they hit the million dollars, they dropped her. Jeez, man, <laughs> I don't even get what life insurance actually does unless you die. 
Because you can borrow against it. How can you borrow against it? It's a weird thing. It's really a weird thing. And then you can take a certain amount of it out if you know that you're going to die and, and either use it for medical bills or use it for, you know, a make-a-wish thing. But my, my account guy said that, no, this is a really good investment to invest in this life insurance policy. I went, how can that possibly good, be a good investment? I don't know. I have to die? I know, I don't get some of it To either. get it? It's a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like that whole buying into a golf course membership. <laughs> Somehow they convince you that later on it's going to be worth some money or right. something. And then you sell your, I don't know. I came money. dangerously close to buying a timeshare in Bahamas till I found out it was $77,000 for two weeks a year and you really didn't own anything. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, but if you go on those little tours like I did with the Four Seasons. You get toasters. <sighs> yeah, I know. And a sleeve of golf balls. <laughs> Sure, you have to sit there for an hour, and it's high-pressure sales. But high pressure. You get stuff. I love that. The tour of uh, timeshares. Because you really oh, think, because I've done it too, and you really think, well, I'm screwing these guys. I don't need this they thing. They give you free I snacks. I would never buy this thing, Did you get but snacks? I'm going to get my, yeah, and I'm yeah. going to get my three days in Vegas. Yep. And the pressure is so high, you feel so guilty. And then they're mean to you the yeah. rest of your vacation. They see you out by the pool, and they come and they sit by you, and they're like, so what are you guys thinking? Because we yeah. did it in Cabo. What are you guys thinking? I'm uh, really disappointed because you know what? I have kids to feed, and I really thought that you guys were going to help me out close this deal. Wow. Yeah, no, yeah, they she's do. right. They say that, and you feel bad. And wow. they're like, you know what? It, it's just a little bit. I mean, don't you care where you vacation? You could just have this place in Cabo. It's it's yours, basically, and you can you can trade it out to, you know, blah, blah. To go to Paris? Yeah. yeah. And, and then they, never, never and then they offer my husband a, a set of ping golf clubs. Well, then wow. that got him all nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't do it, thank God. Anyway, um, all right, so that therapist guy, I don't know how we Did went. Did we ever actually take the first call of the day or just play that thing? We just played the thing. Yeah. Here, it'll be the first call of the day. <laughs> Robert! one 487 9999 Do you know I still can't remember the phone number? No, I go to say it sometimes and go, oh, I shouldn't have started this. 487 9999 Hi, Robert. Hey, Jamie, how are you? Well, you're officially, I guess, the first call of the day. Yay! Yay! Calling from the 714. 714, Rock Long Beach, go Snoop Dogg. Anyway, what can we do for you, my darling? I am calling because of the dilemma that you stated earlier about the uh, picnic on the beach. Oh, I it's, cannot, it was just a fantasy. I have had the perfect picnic on the beach. I've never had a picnic on the beach. I can solve that problem. Ooh. Hey, I've never had sex on the deck of the boat. Can you help me? <laughs> Daddy, I'm not that way, bro. Because even the burly ones can be gay, you know. <laughs> no, check this out. Okay. Different cheeses, meats, strawberries. Yeah. Okay. With some, like, whipped cream. See, you, you know where you lost me? I'm sorry to try. Cheese and, and whipped cream. No, but he lost me with like. Like, he had me when he knew. And I'm all... When he said, we'll have meat and different kinds of cheeses and this, he had me. But then uh. he said, and like that. And that's when he started making it up. And so no, he doesn't no, really no, know the perfect it up. Not making it up. Wine, different, like I said, different cheeses, meats, strawberries, grapes. I don't know that overlooking I don't know. the cliffs down in Laguna Beach. Oh, he's or, got Laguna. I know how you happen to love Laguna. Or love a Laguna. six pack of Zima and a pack of rubbers. <laughs> yeah! Oh, my God! <laughs> 